Hey folks, Randy here, Dual and Cut and Trim. So there's something that's been on my mind and uh, uh, usually it's not an issue I would typically speak on, but it really rubbed me the wrong way. And so um, I wanted to take the opportunity uh, to kind of create a learning opportunity out of it. Um, <clears throat> so there's some, I don't even know if it's drama, but uh, uh, there have been comments made about uh, uh, lawn guys here on YouTube and whether or not they're a real business or not, and whether or not they're fake and uh, uh, all, all these things. And, uh, you know, for the most part, it, these are comments from channels that I don't watch. Um, and so it, it wouldn't really be on my radar, um, but it's being commented on by uh, channels that I do watch. And uh, uh, a friend of mine, um, his name has been brought into it here and there, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. And it really kind of rubbed me the wrong way and so I, I uh, figured I would just stick my big fat nose in the middle of it, kinda, um, and use it as a, a learning opportunity. Um, so the thing that people are saying is that, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, uh, lawn guys that everybody watches, like the bigger channels, um, that uh, these aren't real businesses. Like these people don't actually know what it's like to work in the lawn care business and um, that they're fake and, and whatever, um, that they're just in it for the money and that, uh, you know, they're just doing reviews and, you know, they, they don't know what they're talking about because they don't even run legitimate businesses. They just film and go home and all that. So, I, like I said, I have a friend that uh, falls into the category of people they're talking about and at times here and there uh, has been specifically referenced. And uh, it's rubbing me the wrong way because these guys that are saying this are businessmen, which, and I, say, I shouldn't say that in quotation marks, they're in business. I'm not doubting that they're in business, but I feel like they're missing... Uh, a kind of a basic uh, concept in business and I want to talk to you guys about it uh, and that's that you need to in business you you can't be so stuck in the way that you do things that you ignore great opportunities um, <clears throat> you know when I first started my lawn business um, I did everything I did mulching I did planting pruning uh, uh, mowing, um, brush clearing, um, whatever else you wanted done, I did all of that. Uh, and my profit was not great. Um, I uh, uh, was constantly working my tail off, constantly exhausted, and I wasn't making much. And so I started looking at uh, my numbers, and one of the things that I realized is that even though I had jobs that made a lot of money, uh, they didn't actually bring in much in the way of profit. And I discovered that the overwhelming majority of my profit was coming from lawn mowing. Now, I could, be, I could have stayed bullish and been like, no, I'm gonna do all these things, but, if I had done that, my profit margin would still be low now. Um, but what I decided to do instead is instead of being a jack of all trades, master of none, I decided to focus on lawn mowing. You know, mow, blow, trim, yada yada. And now I make more money now, uh, and my profit is higher than ever because there's not a whole heck of a lot of overhead in lawn mowing. Um, yeah, every once in a while something breaks and you know, there's some regular maintenance, but there's not much in the way of overhead. And so I realized that, and so I focused in on what makes the most money. Now, I also started YouTube. YouTube is a part of the dual and cut and trim business. 
And the reason I started YouTube is first off, I like talking um, to cameras. I, I love the opportunity to be able to teach if there's something that I know and I can impart. And I, I enjoy telling stories. So I decided I would do my best to monetize that because when I started in YouTube, it was so much easier to get monetized. Um, and I had a monetization goal um, in YouTube. My monetization goal was to pay for my, was for my uh, monthly YouTube revenue to pay for my uh, monthly uh, expenditures uh, or my, my monthly technology, technology expenditures. That's what my uh, goal was for YouTube. And I, uh, not there yet, uh, my monthly technology expenditure is right around 140, I think. Uh, I'd have to double check that number, but right around 140. And um, YouTube pays like right around 75% of that, a little more maybe. And so it's been going well, but it, you know, it's a financial part of my business. But in case you haven't noticed, I don't spend a whole lot of time on YouTube because the amount of money I make on YouTube over the course of a month is the same amount of money that I make in about an hour cutting grass. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense for me, uh, just because of where I am in the business, it doesn't make sense for me to put a lot of extra effort into uh, the um, YouTube part of my business. Just like it wouldn't make sense for me to start putting all my effort into uh, uh, mulching. Um, mulching makes up such a tiny percent of my business, it wouldn't make sense for me to spend a lot of time and effort on it. And that's the same thing for a lot of these uh, uh, lawn care YouTube channels. These aren't dumb people. Um, they're running businesses. And one of the things that I, a lot of these guys have discovered is there is a lot of money to be made on YouTube for their business. Um, I, you know, I, I, I have to stay vague because, you know, I, I can't remember what my friend has said publicly and what he's uh, said uh, on YouTube. Um, but, you know, I, I have a friend who he makes good money on YouTube. And so because he makes such good money on YouTube, I mean good money, um, he focuses on that because that's a part of his business that makes him a lot of money. That was a gross bug that was crawling on my neck right there. So he, that's what he focuses on. It doesn't mean he's not running a real business. Like that doesn't, that just doesn't even make sense. Um, but he is looking at what his finances are, what his P&L statement is. And you know, when your P&L says that like, you know, like for me, when the P&L says 95% uh, revenue lawn mowing and 4%, uh, uh, I just said the wrong accent, and 4% uh, uh, mulch, well then you've kind of seen where you need to focus your effort. You're, you're making all your money cutting grass. So stop spending so much time on the mulch. And that's the same thing with a lot of these YouTube guys is that uh, they've looked at their P&L and they're making fantastic money uh, um, on YouTube. So why wouldn't they focus their effort on that and maybe not worry about as many customers? Because, you know, uh, all right, like a, like a monthly customer for me is going gonna, is gonna to give me I don't know. You on typically one hundred and forty dollars a month, um, but if like you know, so I, yeah, it makes sense for me to focus on them. But if like my YouTube was bringing in several thousand dollars a month, I would definitely be focusing on that. It wouldn't mean I'm not a lawn guy. <laughs> it would just mean I saw where my business is able to make a lot of money, and you know, it's kind of a bummer, I guess. Some people make a lot of money cutting grass. Some people make a lot of money because people like to watch them cut grass. I don't know, it's weird, but it just is what it is. You know? And so there's no point 
it's just to, I, well you can, I mean free country you can do whatever you want but it's just it's silly to me to be upset about that and then it's also a little silly to me to base opinions uh, about these people uh, based on what you see on the internet or based on what on one a one-time interaction uh, in person you know I, I've seen some people make comments about uh, uh, some of these YouTube folks um, and like oh you know you meet them in person and they are not what they appear you know they're fake they're fake I mean come on man like you know <laughs> I don't want to get into the whole thing, but uh, everyone acts differently depending on who they're around. Uh, it, in a previous life, I was a so I, I worked in the social work field. I'm not getting into all that stuff, but uh, to think that you can make a determination about a person based on one interaction and based on what you see online, uh, it's not correct. So. I, I don't know. It's just such a silly thing to me, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to uh, talk on it a little bit, that uh, there's nothing wrong with focusing on uh, uh, what's going to make you the most money. You know, if um, I discovered that people really, for some reason, really would pay top dollar for me to knit uh, 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 mittens... You know, it would feel weird because uh, I'm like, I cut grass, you know, but you want to pay me a lot of money to knit mittens like. All right. But if I got in a situation where mitten knitting was paying me, you know, double or triple what uh, lawn care was paying me. It would make me stupid if I didn't pursue that, you know. Like, this concept of, well, this is what we live, ride or die, we cut grass, that's what we do for a living, it don't matter, you know? It's like, well, <laughs> I mean, that's just dumb, you know? Go where it's going to make the most money. Because I think, you know, you can't get so wrapped up in what you do for a living that you forget about why, you know? I cut grass because it's the best way for me uh, to provide for my family you know that's why I do it I also enjoy it but you know if a, something if I came across something that gave me a better ability to provide for my family I would still do that and it doesn't make my business fake it does I mean I mean that's the other thing that's kind of silly they say like oh you know fake business you know real business owners like well <laughs> Ask Uncle Sam at the end of the year. See what he thinks. <laughs> you know, because I mean, the, you know, if you're making money and you're in business, government says you're a business. It's like, look, I get that, you know, you're a faker and stuff, but you still got to pay your taxes, you know. It's such a silly concept to me. I cannot believe I spent 13 minutes on that. But I guess, you know, the point I am trying to make, and I keep... Uh, not making it as well as I would like. The point I'm trying to make is that do look at your bottom line and see where your money's being made, and then focus on that. You know, some people say like you know, fo you know, figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are and work on your weaknesses. And I, while there is some argument to be made there financially, I don't think that makes sense. Look where you're strong and plow ahead that, in that area. You know, make as much money as you can. You know, you're, you're here to provide for your family, not to impress us, you know. Um, so, I mean, look at that. Like I said, I looked at mine and realized that uh, I made most of my money cutting grass. So it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to worry about um, all these other things that are going to cost me little bits extra here and there. Um, you know, if I looked at my P <laughs> if I looked at my P and L and I saw that YouTube made up a significant percentage of it, I would spend more money and time on YouTube. Um, but it doesn't. I mean, if I was, actually, you know what? I already know, I know what I made last year, last uh, month. So, let's see. 
Let's see what my percentage on YouTube was. I'm not going to tell you these numbers, but because you guys know how I am about that. Okay, YouTube made 1.25% of my total revenue. So, for every $100 I made, YouTube accounted for like a buck of that or something. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make that where I put my emphasis. But for some of these guys where YouTube makes up 40, 50, 60, maybe even 70% of their revenue, why wouldn't they focus on that? It's just such a silly concept to me. But I have to get to work. Because, you know, I'm a real business and I run a real business. And here we go. <laughs> I'm a real business. I'm not fake. <laughs> I know what it's like. You know. That's something else I saw that was weird. And now I'm getting a little, I am really needing to bring this to a halt. But I saw a comment one guy was like, don't tell me you're a real business. You know, like, uh, until you've had multiple crews and you got at least 50 accounts, don't tell me you're, you know, real business. It's like, uh, 50 accounts? Bro. 50 accounts? I feel like you should be doing better than that. I mean, 50 accounts. Well, I mean, well, let me rephrase. For me, 50 accounts would be very bad. But I serve as smaller lawns. So I guess, you know, if you're doing acreage, I guess 50 accounts would be good. But it's just it's just so silly to me when I see people like that are in different parts of the country uh, fussing about what other people are doing and how good or not good they're doing. Um, all right, that's enough. It's Randy with Dolan Cut and Trim. Have a good one.